Just last September, I had the chance to use and review an F 0.95 lens by Seven Artisans. Seems like when the 0.95 lenses come out, they really do come out in hordes. Somehow it seems these days that F 1.2 lenses just can't cut it anymore and are a little too slow for everyone. But jokes aside, today I will be reviewing a very unique bokeh monster by Seven Artisans, the brand new 50mm 0.95 made for APS-C and micro four thirds sensor cameras. Just as a quick disclaimer, the lens was loaned to me by YL Camera and I didn't buy the lens and they didn't tell me what to say in this review. Okay, so let's first talk about the build quality of this lens. The lens is made from some kind of metal and I would suspect due to its relatively affordable price, it's definitely most probably built from some kind of aluminium. The lens feels quite chunky and stubby and has quite a big girth for its size. It feels substantial in the hand without feeling too heavy. Overall, I would say it has a nice weight and nice size. I'm also very pleased that it seems to me that all seven artisan lenses these days are coming out with this very clean modern look and it definitely looks and feels super premium. The lens mount on this lens also spots the new gunmetal color that also was used on the 35mm 0.95 lens. If you guys want to check that review out, please click on the right hand side. I'm definitely a fan of this new gunmetal color for the lens mount and I think it makes the lens look so cool and premium. By the way, this lens comes with a slide on cap and I definitely have never been a fan of these type of slide on caps before this but for some reason I think they got this slide on cap right for this particular lens and I think it's probably due to the fact that they got the length of the slide on cap pretty spot on with this lens. It's just snug enough when used that it doesn't easily drop off like the other slide on caps from other lenses they've made before this. So that's definitely a very pleasant surprise. In terms of the aperture ring and focus ring, it feels super smooth and very premium too. All in all, the lens feels very well made and very solid and kudos to Seven Artisans. I definitely don't have any complaints in that department. Okay, so now let's talk about the specs of this lens. First, we will talk about its optical design. This lens is built using seven elements in five groups and includes two Hoya Ultra Low Dispersion elements to improve contrast and color reproduction. This lens comes with 13 aperture blades and it is very well rounded. This lens comes straight from the factory, D-click, so it will definitely please those shooting videos with this lens as D-click lenses are very good at seamlessly allowing changing of exposures from one lighting condition to another. In terms of weight, the lens weighs around 416 grams and for its size, I would say it definitely is a little heavy, but I suppose it's the price you have to pay for having such a fast lens. It's just going to be plenty of glass and the bigger the glass the heavier it gets. In terms of aperture this lens can be opened up all the way to f0.95 and can be closed down to f16. It has a minimum focusing distance of about 45 centimeters and it has a filter thread with a diameter of 62 millimeters. This lens comes with five different mounts. The lens that I used was for the FX mount being an APS-C and micro four thirds lens the equivalent focal length this lens equals to is around 80 to 100 millimeters respectively on a full frame sensor. So it's what you may call a medium sort of focal length for a lens. Okay, so now let's talk about the usability and experience using this lens. Hmm, where do I start? In general, the usability of this lens was generally good. Everything from the focus ring to the aperture ring was pretty smooth and seamless. However, I have to admit that there were times while using this lens, I found that the aperture ring wasn't as tight as I would have wanted it to be because 99% of the time I want to use this lens at f0.5. However, there were times I noticed it wasn't always set at 0.95. It sort of like moves for some reason sometimes. You know, a tiny knock might even get it off its 0.95 setting. So with this lens, you need to be aware of that and just make sure each time before you shoot with this lens, just double check to see if the aperture is set or rotated to f0.95, if that's what you want to use. In terms of images this lens produces, well, it really has a soft haziness to it when it's shot wide open at f0.95. The images look like they have some kind of glow and dreaminess to it, especially when shooting bright subjects. Colors this lens produces can look quite washed out depending on the lighting and subject matter, but nothing too major, I guess. Using this lens during the day wide open is also a challenge if you don't have an ND filter handy. The glow that this lens produces really reminds me of my Olympus vintage glass. It's just so hazy and dreamlike and really kind of milky looking wide open. You can sort the haziness in Lightroom by using the dehazing tool if you don't really want the haziness to be too overpowering. I found that in terms of chromatic aberrations, this lens really suffers quite badly. Subjects in the distance were soft and always had some kind
strain of purple or green fringing. I guess this lens strength is definitely when you use it with subjects that aren't too far away, like headshots and portraits and other kind of subjects like that. I found that it definitely shines a lot more in that department as it does make your portraits more flattering when shooting with a lens like this, as it does a good job at softening any blemishes. The bokeh that this lens produces is quite nice and not too busy looking too. However, bokeh balls do have a cat's eye appearance towards the edges of the frame and they definitely are far from being super round. I was hoping to achieve that Helios swirl in my shots, which I have seen on other reviews for this lens, but somehow I didn't really nail getting any shots that could show you guys that effect on this lens. With this lens, lens flaring can also be quite an issue. It definitely does flare quite a bit if you are shooting directly towards strong light, so that's something that you definitely need to be aware of. You can definitely mitigate it a little by blocking out some of the light if it's coming from an angle, and stopping the lens down to does help a little. I feel the one thing this lens should have come with is definitely a lens hood, but unfortunately they didn't include one. Here are some tests I did for lens flaring and lens breathing. I was quite surprised that lens breathing seemed to be quite well controlled for this lens. Flaring is definitely an issue, but if there's one thing about this lens you need to hardwire in your brain is that this is a character kind of a lens, so it's definitely not in any stretch of the imagination going to have really clean images wide open. That being said, stopping this lens down to even 1.4 or f2 and beyond can produce quite sharp images. It's just when this lens is wide open when the lens really does reef havoc in my opinion. However, despite all the shortcomings I just mentioned to you guys, I feel somewhat drawn to test it in a proper portrait shoot environment as I feel it would really fare a lot better. But unfortunately at the moment, I still am unable to shoot weddings due to the current situation here in Malaysia. But yeah, I guess I would love to revisit this lens again given the chance. Okay, so what What's my conclusion after using this lens for a few weeks now? Who do I think should really get this lens? Hmm, for me this is quite a difficult question to answer because this lens is just so subjective. It's one of those lenses that gets me all excited using it because of its f0.95 aperture. However, when I do shoot it wide open, I am met with optical disappointment most of the time. It doesn't work as well as the 7 Artisan's 35mm 0.95 lens, in my opinion. I think this lens works best in environments where you have opportunity to shoot in subdued lighting. Also with this lens, you need to be having the right frame of mind of what type of look you would be able to achieve with it and it is a lens that has character and it's definitely far from perfect optically and in my opinion it is lens for you to achieve that dreamy kind of look as long as you have that in mind i'm sure in the right hands this lens can render quite beautiful images however if you are out there just to get yourself a super sharp low light beast then you may be buying the lens for the wrong reasons and you might be quite disappointed but that's not to say that this lens is totally horrible. It isn't. It's just a lens that needs to be understood and you need to nail what you want to use it for. Right, so that's it then. I hope you did find this short review helpful and if you did, please don't forget to give me a like, share and subscribe to this channel. Also, I've left links to all the gears that I use to make these videos and also I've left a link to buy me a coffee if you'd like to support this channel. Right then, see you guys in the next video. Peace.